this uh, video, what we're going to do, we're going to try and capture the potential provisions in this lake. It's about two years old. Nobody's fished it for the first year, let the water establish. Um, and now it's been open to members. It's been fishing okay. It's quite clear. It's going to be very delicate fishing. I'm probably going to fish the lift method on the waggler, just with pellets and worms and maggots. Um, I'll show you how to plumb up real nice and delicate and uh, hopefully we'll catch some nice potential provisions. Should be good. I'm looking forward to giving this a go. I'm tempted to get my pole out and have a go because you really can fish nice and delicate with a pole. But my pole tackle's in a bit of a mess. But I'll come back tomorrow and fish the waggler. Get it all set up. Might even bring the boys down and have a bit of fun. Looks lovely, doesn't it? What fun. Right, I'm in the tackle room. I've just bought a pint and a half of bait from Medway Tackle. Richard Taylor, Wayne and Sandra, they do a fantastic job in there. Richard Taylor sorts out the South East Reservoir matches. And um, yeah, if ever you're in the area, give Medway a tackle room. Really good. Anyway, this is what I do with all the maggots when I get them. Get a riddle. I've got, uh, I've got two riddles, a pink riddle and a maggot riddle. It's just handy. To be honest, Richard riddles these all the time, so there's not many dead ones, but you uh, can find some bait shops are a bit dubious. I just run them through the riddle. I'll give them a little bit more maize meal and um, put them in the fridge. And I've got a pint of casters. I've got some worms as well. I'll show you them in a minute. And um, I've got a little bit of chopped meat. I'm going to see how I get on with the chopped meat. I'm thinking I might fish two lines. I might fish the pellet on the lift method and I might try and get them on the drop. I've quite often caught tench, despite people using the lift method on the bottom, I've caught a lot of tench on the drop, a lot of tench on the drop. So um, we'll try the maggots and the casters on the drop. Right, these maggots have finished riddling themselves off. I'm quite surprised actually, there is a few dead ones on here. Normally, Richard, there's hardly any dead ones, but I did leave them in the, their bag, airtight bag for probably two or three hours. So I'm gonna throw them off just going to add, throw them away, just going to add a little bit of maize meal, just a tiny bit, I've already put some in actually, give them a shake around, absolutely lovely maggots, I'll put them in the fridge, tomorrow morning when I come to go fishing, I'll riddle them off with a pinky riddle, they're slightly smaller than the maggot riddle, just put it over the riddle, shake it really quick, none of the maggots fall out, all the dust falls on the deck, Get nice clean maggots so when you're with the catapult you don't get dust in your face. It's horrible. So I keep my worms in the fridge. I've had these worms for about two or three months now. Quite a while and I'll give them a few, few uh, bits of veg scraps. They're in pretty good nick really. So um, there's a few but I did get some out earlier. Left them in the boot of my car only for a few hours and they are fried to death. So I've had to get some more. But they'd be lovely. Just a little change bait, probably, there's not loads of silverfish in this venue, so I'll just nip a half one in, might chop some up and mix them with the uh, micro pellet crumb. The other thing I'm gonna take along is just a little bit of, little bit of meat. I've uh, got a, little, a bit of eight mil meat. Uh, just gonna introduce two or three cubes of meat over the top, every now and then. I've rinsed these off with boiling water, once I've cubed them, it takes all the fat off and then they sink better. It's good on the rivers, it gets it down. I'm not sure on the still waters, it's not big water so there wouldn't be much tow. Should be all right. I'm sure they'll still eat it. Put these in the fridge, chill out. Essential bit of any fisherman's. Right, so the plan is to fish the pellet on the bottom. I'm going to be using these swim stim red krill durable hookers. I think, yeah, can't be bothered to make expanders and pumping pellets and all that stuff. Um, and I'm going to feed, I'm not going to take very much of these, uh, some mainline cell micro pellets. They're lovely, they've got a really nice nose, and I've got a few little, little uh, three mil, four mil hookers over the top of that. Make a little, dampen them off for two minutes, drain them off make a little ball, might add a tiny bit of fish meal ground bait over the top. A bit cautious about fish meal, they're tending to be a bit more naturals in this place. So anyway, we're going to fish the pellet on the lift and then 
maggot and caster on the drop. I'll now show you the rigs we're going to use. Right, so this is what tackle we're going to use. I've got a Normark Avenger 3000. It's a 13 foot rod. It's got a very fast taper, so it's quite soft in the tip. I'm going to have to hit them quite hard because um, it is a bit soft in the tip. Um, but it's a nice, lovely old rod. I've got my very favourite Dara Exists two and a half thousand size loaded with three pound maxima i'm going to change that tonight that's uh, had a season and change it over uh, i'm going to use these drenin loaded wagglers i'm going to use a loaded waggler so that i only have to put weight down the line and then i'm just going to fix it with some float stops i can find some float stops i've always got float stops some gripper stops put them on there uh very good tip i've got the finer tipped ones or if i can't see just the slightly thicker, more bulbous ones. A really good tip. If you find a float you like, go out and buy the whole range of sizes. I'm going to have a float adapter on there so you can just change them over. If the wind changes, you can just go up one size and away you go. You can just take control. Get a pair of each size and then all the way through the range. To be honest, I nearly use these all for all my waggler work. When I'm fishing a bit more delicate baits, I use these ones. These are, I don't know whether they're still here, loaded peacock waggler. This is a crystal glow tip waggler. This takes a bit more bait. This is more for little baits like maggots and stuff. I'm hoping I can get out there um, with three pan line. It's nice and light, nice flicky rod. Should get out there. Don't want to, I want to just be able to reach the pads at a good cast. Because that way, if you have a too heavy a float, you definitely, and you can easily get in there, you're going to end up in the pads all the time. It's a bit like when you're a uh, method feeder fishing, you just want the right weight to get there. It makes a big difference. I might spend a bit of time clipping up beforehand and getting a feel for which float reaches it. Anyway, we're going to fish uh, B51018s uh, on the maggot hook. Might go a bit smaller if I'm just fishing single maggot on the drop. Really good maggot pattern. And then for the pellet, good old faithful 911. You won't get much better than this for pellet fishing. Got some pre-tied hook loops with those. Um, that's about it. I'll show you the bulk pattern in a minute when I've done it. Right, so this is how it's going to go. Let's get that out of the way. So I've secured the float with uh, two float rubbers. So I can move that around without damaging the line, check the depth. But hopefully I don't want to move it around. And I'm going to mark... Oh, it's getting a bit of a mess. I'm going to mark the rod or mark on the rod exactly where the depth is so I don't have to move that because this is going to be so sensitive. Right, most of the shot is going to be here, which is about six inches away from a loop. Okay, so I've got a little loop on there. I am going to plumb up, got that knot inside there. I'm going to plumb up to that and then add a six inch hook length to that. Okay, so I'm going to be laying six inches of line on the bottom. I need this set. I'm going to have a couple of number eights, maybe, yeah, a couple of number eights on there. This is a double bulk. So that's the main bulk. This one, this little tiny bulk, is going to be sat on the bottom. I'm going to get the float so it is literally just that much showing, virtually nothing. And then when that num two number eights come up, it will pop up like that. Not a lot, just a tiny bit. But literally, a fish is only going to have to sniff on that to get that right. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm uh, going to need a bit of this, a bit of silicon to make the float float, just to break the surface tension. It's quite difficult to do this on a waggler. It's easier to do it on a pole float because it's a lot more sensitive and you've got less things affecting the, the performance of the waggler, like the wind and the tow and the sheer distance. So we're going to give it a go. It might take a bit of a while to get it set up right. But once it's right and going, honestly, these little corrosion bites, which sometimes corrosion bites are literally just a twist of the float sometimes. They really are delicate little biters. Um, so yeah, that's that one. And then the the on the drop one, I'm just going to put these two bolts. I use the same float. I might use these ones, but two bolts just around the hook. And then probably two number 10s down the line, just teeny weeny shot, just to sink the line. I might even just use a Carisso um, hook link joiner for it instead. See if I've got any of those lying about. 
I have got some of that somewhere. Where are they? Is there any in here? No. <laughs> anyway, I'll use some of them. I was lucky I was showing you guys this. I've just got this rod out ready to uh, get set and it's a Normark and it's not an actual float rod. It's a quiver tip rod. It's a Normark quiver tip. Lovely light rod. I don't use this very much anymore, but um, it's a really nice rod for small roach and like roach and dace, like link ledgering. Got to give this a go this winter. Anyway, let's try and find my other Normark rod. In amongst all this bloody rubbish it's not rubbish but it's in amongst all of them somewhere <laughs> actually it might be in that rod bag over there as well i've got too many rods how many rods have you guys all got leave a comment i last time i counted i think i had 46 including poles and i'm pretty certain i've bought another one or two since then so i'm getting near 50 rods fly catfish carp pike Jig rod, light jig rod, heavy jig rod, poles, whips, carp poles, backup poles, feeder rods, heavy feeder rods, light feeder rods. Oh my God, I've got so many rods. <laughs> One for every day of the week, and then some. I'm going to change this real line, take it off, and it's done. It's just starting to fade in colour a bit. Quickly go through how I changed the real line on this. Just taking that all the way, I've got a big bundle of it here. Going to chop that up into pieces because the chances are this is probably going to go into landfill and it's not very good for the birds if you're back in unless you want to buy you know i don't know how much three pound line this takes 200 or 156 yards of 30 mil stuff so you'd need to put a fair bit on there so you can't see that terrible 156 yards of 30 mil but i've got three pound line three pound maxima which is 15 pounds so i've got a six or seven pound test line it's a similar thickness i'm going to attach a four turn what not to that uh, and then try and get it right at the bottom of the rim sometimes you can put it behind the clip i could put it behind the clip because i don't use this for much feeder work and that keeps the knot out of the way when you're filling all the line up so that it doesn't catch if you've got enough depth here to lose a knot so make sure when you're filling your backing up, you've got enough depth. What you do with the joining knot, you can just put sellotape around there and hold it down and it's just a bit messy. I have had it before where I've been trotting a very long trot and didn't actually tie it and the line just all sithered, sithered, slithered out the reel and the float just carried on down. <laughs> really bad. I've tied it with a four turn water knot ever since. I'll show you how to do that. When you're doing this, I always try to uh, thread it through a rod. It's a lot easier to hold a reel when you're spinning the line in really quick for a rod. So through one eye, make sure your bail arm's open. So four turn water knot, here we go. If I can remember how to do it. So get your lines together, form a loop like that. I can't see. Get your lines together, form a loop, trap the loop. And this is where the four turns come in. Hold the other end. One. Two. Helps if you have the lines at the same length. Two. Bloody knots are fiddly. Three. Missed that one. That was only three, wasn't it? That's the fourth one. Yeah, that was hard work. I think I missed one of those. Anyway, see, it ends up like that. Give it a bit of moisture. Put it all together nice. That is a bloody good knot. <laughs> That's strong as an ox. Bob Nudge uses them for his hook links. And if they're good enough for him, they're definitely good enough for me. Can we focus on anything phone? There we go. Right, let's trim off the tags. 
What I was saying about the knot going on the reel, you can try and get it on the line clip, it makes a big difference. If you look, there it is. Where is it? I can just about get that on the clip, give it a bit of a stretch. Yeah, fiddly bloody thing. Right, that's brilliant. That's right under the clip there. You see, that's out of the way. If it was a feeder rod, I'd be a little bit of a reel. I'd be a bit more worried about that. All right, now, one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to put this bucket, this reel line, my Maxima, in a bucket of soapy water. I want the line to sink. Just takes the tension out of it a little bit. The water tends to detwist it a bit. So I'm going to do that. In she goes. And away we go. So I want it, making lots of lovely bubbles, <laughs> Good fun. Buy your line in bulk, don't buy 100 metres, 100 metres is never enough. This comes in 250 uh, metres, um, a 12 pound line I think comes in 600 metre spools. Keep your change your reel lines once a year, once every six months. Depends what sort of fishing you're doing. Um, if they start to look a bit lighter coloured than the original, change them. And the, the annoying thing is, you probably only the first 30, 40 yards need changing, but you might as well change the whole lot because you don't want 30, 40 yards. Or you get what happened to me the other day. I said about it running out. Right, got that all on there. Look at the line lay on that. Let's go hold it up there. Bloody beautiful that is. You could do with just a tiny oh, Could just have a tiny bit more. Just a tiny bit more on the lip there, but that'll be fine. I might just shine that lip up a little bit, give it a bit of a buff, just because that's where the shine that lip up a little bit, give that a bit of a buff because that's where the line's coming out. Perfect. And that is how I renew my line. Oh, don't forget to chop your uh, line up. Right. Quarter to six in the morning. I've got to get my cows in. I can see them in the mist. And then this afternoon, I'm gonna go over to Beach Pond. Looking forward to it. Counting, come on. They're not very enthusiastic today. Counting, come on. Happy cow milking time. It's next day, as I said, I was going to riddle these maggots off, so just go on pinky riddle, give them a good old shake around, because it's a pinky riddle, they don't go through too quick if you keep them moving, and there you have it, dust free, no stuff in your face, you could put a bit of a flavouring in there if you wanted to right now, but I'm not going to bother, something I will bother with though, I'm going to bring a floating maggot box for on the drop bed fishing. Lovely to fish the float again. I've been sat there on part of the board with this for far too long. Uh, I've had a few fish. Uh, summed up, I'll show you how I've sum up. The lift method, I haven't quite got it working quite right. It's just a bit too thin of not letting the float settle. Cast out, see how we get on. Right, so I've got all my bait, I've got the pellets, I'm feeding the pellets, the micro pellets, further out. I was fishing maggot out there, I'm getting plenty of bites, but it's quite a cast over there, and I can't get the bait to, it's spraying around a bit. I'm gonna, I've got two lines, I always like two lines. The water slopes up, so it's a little bit shallow as you get closer to it, only about six, eight inches. Uh, I did start feeding meat, but... I'm not going to bother with the meat, to be honest, because they're very small, the cruisings and tench that I've been catching. I've had one about three pounds and some other little ones, so I'm going to put that away and freeze that for later. I've got some, oh, I've got the worms there. I will keep with them. Something I should have brought, the sun's quite hot, but a little tip, uh, bar towels. If you get any bar towels, just get them wet and take them with you, and then you can just lay them over, because your pellets, it'd be amazing how they dry out. 
during the day and your worms get french fried as my worms that died yesterday will show anyway yeah we've got the um coming up i've plumbed up i put uh here's my main bulk and then the second bulk the double bulk down here i think Like I've got a slight tangle on there. So I've plumbed up when I put the weight on this on the hook link, I put the weight like an SSG cast out around to there, attach the rod to the first eye, and then count up the eyes. Fortunately, it was bang on five eyes one, two, three, four, five, no, six. And then the next one back is back another two, but it does shallow up as I go further over, so it's quite hard to get this lift by spot on. Um, because as I get nearer the lilies it shallows up by about eight nine inches so I've just kept it back so that I've got somewhere to go don't want to fish right up against the lilies first off so yeah plumbed up with a weight on there and then put two I'm probably going to add another one on there three just to dot it right down and it has shown a couple of lift bites when I've been right but they've been taken quite quickly so yeah just feeding two lines maggots over there pellets over there the i have had tench about three pound the tench are very visual they're bubbling like crazy but when you hook one they all run a mile you see a thousand bubbles everywhere so i'm sort of ducking and diving between the strings I need to keep an eye on the time. I've got milk with cows. Oh, there's a bite already. Missed it. That's one of the reasons why feeding before you cast is better because you're not you can concentrate, but I can never do it. feed was woefully short. A little tip I've been meaning to say with a cap hole, it's quite hard to describe, but with your when you're firing your cap hole out, to sort of give it a flick with your arm as well, rather than just using the elastic, it tends to it tends to group it up a little bit better. You just fire it, it um, Tends to spray it out a bit, and that's why I've missed that bite. Yeah, the tea. Oh no, it's not that untwisted itself. It was just covering over the hook. There's loads of fizzing out there at the moment. There's bubbles right over that last bit of... God, there's tons of them. Oh, right over that last pellet I threw. All the pellets I threw in. I think the time is very close to putting the pellet on. I'm sure you guys all know, all know how to do this, but just in case any of you don't, how to hook a maggot. There's a stumpy bit. And it goes in like that. Not in the point where you want to try and barbed hooks, it's hard to not get them to uh, bleed, but you've got to try. If you had a finer pattern of hook, you'd probably be able to do it, but nice and lively. Having the camera is making me cast on the right. start introducing some of my um, those hook bait pellets just a few just to get them hopefully get a few of them better ones I wouldn't mind a nice tinch another nice tinch oh 
It's always a wait, getting a feel for the bait. First three or four went in the bloody lilies. A bit less, that's the one. They went in the lilies as well. Bugger. That's the one. Even that was a bit too far. They fire really easy though, dude. There's a bullet by it. Oh. Oh, that was in the lilies. No. Don't think it's in the lilies. Is she going to settle properly? I wonder if you guys can see those, that float. Let's try and get in on the float. There's something taking that on the drop. She's just settling down. I know everyone can see that. Yeah, really low in the water. I think you can see that. Yeah, you can just about see it. Let's put a few maggots in. Those maggots are a bit short. Just thinking about going under. Thinking about it. There it goes. Oh, missed grabbed the rod. All right, let us settle. Try and get some more of these pellets on the float. There you go, bloody miles then pellets. There's a lift bite. There we go. Another cruising. Big fish move under the lily pads then. Get back on where the float is. Can we see that? I'm assuming everybody can see that. Starting to lift, starting to lift, starting to dip, starting to lift. It's doing all sorts of things. There we go. There are a lot of these cruisings in here. I think I've just caught myself a new PB, smallest ever tench. I think tench have to be the cutest little fish out there. Look at him, isn't he beautiful? I know last year these fish, they'd only been in the water for a couple of months and I was feeding the lake whilst uh, it was settling down and the tench was spawning like crazy so I wouldn't be surprised if that was last year's last year's um, last year's stock. Really good to see. Before you know it we'll have to net this place, there'll be too many little stunted tench in here. <laughs> Not a bad problem to have.
yourself another micro tench. There are loads of these in here. Oh bless. I'm definitely oh keep still little fella. I'm definitely gonna bring the boys down here later. We can have a go. Look at that. Isn't he pretty? They are a beautiful thing. Don't have to be big to be beautiful. Right, I'm on the hunt for a slightly better fish. So I've been feeding a few of these when I sussed the weight of them. These are durable hookers from Swim 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 Stim Red Krill. Anyway, I've given them a bit of a go. I have just had a little cruising on them. I had to wait a long time for a bite though. So I'm not sure whether it's worth waiting. It wasn't any bigger. But I'll give it another go. What I might do, stop feeding the maggots. Just feed a few pellets and the uh, micros. I've only got another half hour so won't be able to play about too much. See what she does. I think that focus. Oh, there it goes. Little dib. Definitely get a slower response. There it goes. Oh, talk about slower response. My response to striking that was awful. <laughs> I probably should change the hook size as well. Try and do that again. All right, we're away. I know you guys can see that. All. There it is. All right, concentrate, Paul. Sitting a bit high in the water that time. And there's a load of bubbles coming up just past it. You see all them pinpricks just past it? Oh my god. See if we can get some a little ball of micros in there. I think I am going to stop feeding the maggots for a while. We know we can catch plenty of little ones on maggots. Let's try and work out how to catch a big one. Right, let's see if we can pop this. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> That's what I was saying about a wet towel to keep your micros nice and moist. They've just been out in the sun and they dried out and they didn't want to stick together very well. Oh, is that lifting up that front then? Thinking about it, wasn't it? Just thinking about it, there's bubbles right over the top of her. Uh, it's exciting, this is. I'll get, I'll strike in a minute and it'll be an ounce tench. Oh, 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 that was a bit past it, but not too bad. It wasn't in the lily pads, which is the main thing. That was right on the money. Still a few bubbles around there. Oh, right on the float, then bubbles. Oh, there it goes. Oh. I'm too busy looking down the camera to see the uh, hold the rod. Must try better, try harder. Speak something then, because a load of bubbles went all flying off all over the place. I don't know if you can see them. Let's pop it back in. I'm feeling confident we're getting a better fish. I know they're in here. I'm just going to leave the line on the surface. I have been sinking it, but the cast was a bit short, so I'll leave it there. I think it's still on oh, the float sitting a bit low because I've come out a bit. I'm down the down in the slightly deeper water. So we definitely won't get a lift on that bite. I'm saying that. Just gone up a bit then. 
Just going to change over to a worm. See what happens. The way these tench all spook when, or um, well, you see a mass of bubbles all the time, makes me think these tench are quite spooky, the bigger ones. And um, yeah, wondering how to how to get me a bigger one. I can catch plenty of little ones. Wondering whether it's just a case of ploughing through them, or there's something to. I think they're really spooky. I keep frequently seeing massive bubbles, massive bubbles. Like all of a sudden, there's a whole load of them. Like there's eight or ten tench all legged it somewhere. The water is quite clear. It's not very deep. Not conducive to confident feeding. Right, we're all done now. I'm going to go home. I've got milk with cows. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed this sort of fishing. It's really nice. Nice and busy. Lots of bites. I'm going to come back here later on with the boys and do a bit of whip fishing. So keep your eye out for whipping the kids into shape video. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. I'm back milking the cows a couple of days later. I've been trying to think how to... Uh, trying to think how to um, catch these big attention there. I haven't thought of anything. <laughs> if any of you know what you'd do to try and catch these big attention, leave a comment below. <laughs>